Were you always a Star Wars fan? I was a Star Wars fan in the fact that um, I had already decided to become a film major in college mm -hmm. when the movie came out. And there's no question that it was a groundbreaking um, movie. I think anybody and everybody, certainly that was studying film like I was, recognized that he had created something that was a complete and total game changer. And I think that that's something inside the company that, um, that I, I still find the most interesting, which is that George recognized that taking stories to drive technology was one of the most important things you could do. Steven Spielberg called me right when I was finishing the island, and he said, I'd like to do Transformers, and I'm like, okay, all right, I'll think about it. Hung up, I'm not doing that movie. That's what I said to myself, I'm not doing a toy movie. It, it, when I was a kid, I never liked Star Trek when I was a kid. Growing up, I always thought it was, honestly, I couldn't get into it. My friends loved it, and I would like try, and I'd watch episodes, but it, it always felt too philosophical for me. And we tried to, like some of the writers love Star Trek, I was not really a fan. My producing partner never saw it. Right. I have no love for He-Man. I just, I, I, just I, know, I have no love for He-Man either. Because back then there was no, nothing on TV. We didn't have cable. We didn't have the fucking internet. So you watched what was on. I was not like a hardcore, like, ah, fuck, I love this shit. You know, I made fun of it a lot because I was 13 years old and I was like, this is for babies. They don't even fight. Nobody gets stabbed. I remember someone asking me whether or not I'd ever want to take a crack at Superman. And at the time I said no. Um, I didn't have an affinity for the character as I had for Batman, and I, I, I right, I'm deep right, in deconstructing right. like superheroes. It's like, hey, do you want to make a Superman movie? He's like, well, I'm about to tear him down. <laughs> right, like, right. I'm going to kill him. Right. I don't mind interested in fixing him or making him interesting. Right. Uh, Ivan Reitman called me uh, when I was still working on Spy, and. Uh, they had a sequel script that they wanted to get done, and um, I was so flattered, but at the same time, when I read the script, I, I couldn't quite figure my way into it, uh, and so kind of hemmed and hawed a bit. She called me in for what I thought was going to be another general meeting, and she shut the door behind me and basically asked if I'd be interested in doing this. So um, so actually, I, I asked if I could if I could think about it, and she kind of squint, squinted at me and said, how hard do you think you need to think? <laughs> But I wanted to take a couple of a couple of days and just like I, I don't know I, I um because to me the notion of what's the entire galaxy or world that you're creating or something I can't imagine getting excited about creating that. It's much more exciting to me when you get you know um, a group of people who are like coming up to you and, and really really excited about it, and then there are other people who walk out just I mean literally saying it was the worst movie I've ever seen. Having those two extremes to me is, you know, is the mark of a, the type of movie that I want to make, so. In looking back and doing the research and finding the way to start it, what was the biggest help for you uh, going back to the comics and specifically which which, which incarnation? It wasn't, it wasn't the comic books. One of the really? things if someone told you when you were working at Wall Street Journal <laughs> as a reporter that you would one day be here promoting a massive superhero film that you directed, <laughs> what would you say to them? Oh gosh, I'd be like, you got to be kidding. <laughs> Why did you want to do Charlie's Angels? Why was that the thing that you thought, you know, oh, okay, I'll do that in 2019? 2019, you know, these are um, trying times. I don't know if you've oh, noticed. Yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I read the papers. I, I wanted to make a movie that celebrated women at work. We just had to add stakes. And to add stakes, you just have to add death or peril. Like, real peril, not like in the old show where it's like, hey man, I'm trapped. I said to myself, if you can make this really real and edgy, I knew I wanted to make it very credible and serious. When you get the opportunity to make something in live action, you get the opportunity to make it real. Um, but an update of Machine Nerve. And I wanted it to feel um, very gritty and 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 layered and textured and tactile. The, the thing that was most important to me was making sure that as much as possible you believed it, because it's crazy, it's Star Trek, but it, we had to approach it with a commitment to it being legitimate and making it feel not just real and vital, but also relevant for today's audiences. It's a very different context you know, now than it was 43 years ago. I didn't quite find myself relating to princesses when I was a kid. They were always very pretty. They were always very dainty. They were too perfect. And that wasn't my experience as a girl. And so I really wanted to see a version of that that rang true to me. Because once you're in a live action medium, you have to kind of look at it in a completely different way. You have to believe that 
you know, this flesh and blood woman falls in love with this hunk of fur, you know, you've got to make them kind of more individual so that uh, a little less archetypal, you know. But this feels very much like a, a grounded, independent movie that has fantastic elements, but it really feels like real people and fantastic events. It's really approached with the, the idea of what if this thing happened to real people? And, and I think that resonates. The idea was to just to see if, if we could tell a superhero story, but in a world that was relatable, that seemed more like our own, and hopefully that that would have more relevance. How do I kind of back up, reground it, and make these women feel relatable? And the danger and the stakes of the movie kind of just feel more real. If uh, you're brand new to it all, I think you'll be shocked at how easily you could sink into it. And this movie we, that we did, the goal was to make a movie for moviegoers, not just for Star Trek fans. Right. So if you've never seen Star Trek before, you can see this movie. The interesting path we've had is the conversation that took place around consumer products. Mm. Because there were a lot of companies that were in place who, frankly, didn't initially feel that Star Wars was for girls. And when you have a company... Star Wars fans out here? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> And when you have a company um, situation where between Lucasfilm and Disney, we were all looking at this situation and saying, no, with Star Wars, we have to change this. A lot of times I would say to Ryan, we got to think about the fans. And he said, no. The original movie spoke to me, and I really was excited with this movie to make sure that it speaks to everybody, you know? Whether you have reference point from any other season is kind of irrelevant because it's a show for everyone and it's so inclusive and for me i'm a new hoovian so i i i i hadn't seen it <laughs> we also get to bring this whole new cast of characters uh to the story that is great that will um make it more interesting for the for uh the, the future and for new fans um coming to the franchise um I want to inspire studio executives <laughs> to hire women, right? Like, I want to just be like, I did the job. The job can be done by a woman. If anything, that's the legacy that I want to start to leave with this movie. I really want to get more women behind the camera. I mean, we, we work with a lot of female writers, but I think the next thing we need to do is get m many more women directing. It is going to happen. We are going to hire a woman who's going to direct a Star Wars movie, I have no doubt. These are female empowered leads that we're putting in Star Wars, but they're also very, very different. And I think the other most important thing probably is that we're really emphasizing the need to diversify. A diversity of body shape, a diversity of ethnicity, and a diversity of, I guess, romantic and gender expression. We're so happy to have a queer angel. Like the motive of the show, it's getting people to see a strong female lead in an animation, which I don't think is done too often. It's getting people to see a strong female lead in an animation, which I don't think is done too often. That like had this story or narrative about women sort of coming together and, and overpowering guys. Um, and also for showing the progression of inclusivity all the way up to a little girl with an attainable waist and comfortable clothes. This movie tells a great story that I think kids need to hear and be reminded of. It's a female character. Her name is Cruz Ramirez. You realize, oh, it's racing doesn't have to be only for men. Funny what you can do when all you have left depends on it. Done. Fight like a girl? Yeah, I fight like a girl. And in a world where Tila was, was going to take the forefront and be such a main character, you're talking about two women who have been in the shadows of very powerful male characters since the inception of the franchise. Enough, you fool! Do you think I can do nothing without Skeletor? Ha! Think again! So I think this film is incredibly diverse, it's intersectional. Jasmine wants the best for Agrabah, and what's best for them is if she leads. She finally speaks out and becomes the leader that she's destined to be. The biggest and most egregious addition is, of course, Belle's goddamn washing machine. A thing she invented while also promoting female literacy. But oh no, here comes the patriarchy. What on earth are you doing? Teaching another girl to read. Isn't one enough? And then they smash her washing machine. <laughs> destroy it. I mean, at least you tried, Belle. All I wanted was to teach a child to read. Boys! 
You're both gonna get what I promised. Have I ever not delivered for you before? Yeah. So you guys want to drink? What are we drinking? Like a beer, tequila, all sorts of things. <laughs> Buddy. Last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. That was a close call, huh, Goosey? Huh? <laughs> Those bad guys still in there somewhere. Ow! Mother A broken old man with so much concern for the royal family and so little concern for his own. So you leave me alone! No, B, no, no, no! Please! Please! What did I do? Scaring for insecurities. Oh, don't leave me! Insecurity detected. I spent a lot of money on it. I, I mean, I think it's real money. Stop! Just stop, okay, Cruz? You don't even know. You don't even have one clue. Hey, I was just trying to... Do you to... know what happens if I lose this race? If I lose, I never get to do this again. If you were a racer, you'd know what I'm talking about, but you're not. So you don't. <sighs> There's plenty of kids out there. It can't be just about the one you're still clinging to. It's called loyalty. Something a lost toy wouldn't understand. Come work on the movie with me. Together, we can inspire a new generation and make the best Darkwing Duck ever! Yes, I will. Ow! No! Why? Showtime! <laughs> Next time they shine your light in the sky, don't go to it. The bat is dead. Bury it. Consider this mercy. Do you bleed? You will! <laughs> It makes total sense that you're angry. I disappointed you. I neglected you, and I wasn't there when you needed me. I'm truly sorry. I don't care. I beg your forgiveness. I'm sorry I kept so many secrets from you for so long. If you give me another chance... Fool. Your people need a king. No, they already have one. <laughs> You're being serious. It's time for me to be who I am rather than who I'm supposed to be. But you, you you're a leader. That's who you are. But you, you, you're a leader. That's who you are. Okay, I'm here. What's going on? No, not me! Her! <sighs> what? What is she doing back Come here? Come on, guys, get her set up! Quick! Oh. But you being knighted man-at-arms? This is the proudest moment of my life, Tila. And the sheriff. Okay, my toys. Yeehaw! Sheriff Jesse, giddy up, bullseye. All right, ladies. Let's loosen his grip.
Don't act like you heard of us or something. Because they have. Joel, please get up! Ah! 